Hello folks, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you this evening to two wonderful people from the land of the Cameroons. We have with us Dr. Melvis Asosi and uh, Mr. Jean-Claude de Kekniem. Dr. Melvis, please tell us something about yourself. Well, thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm a Cameroonian. I've been in Perth for two years and I am a researcher at the University of uh, Western Australia and at the same time a conversational trainer at Stanley College in Perth City. Oh, by the way, welcome to Western Australia. Thank you very much. Tell us a little bit more about your work. Okay, I'm working on documenting endangered languages. Yes. Fascinating. Tongues that are dying out because ma many people don't pay attention to the languages that are dying out, fading away, and it's a part of our culture. So I'm for documenting languages because it is an integral part of our culture. Wonderful. Dr. Melvis Associ, that's an interesting work that you do. May Thank I also you. introduce you to Mr. Jean-Claude Kekniem. Jean-Claude, tell us something about yourself. Well, thanks again. I uh, really, really appreciate you inviting us today. Uh, my name is Jean-Claude Kekniem. I'm a Cameroonian, born in uh, Douala, which is a pro pro provincial city of Cameroon. I've uh, been in Australia for 17 years now, and I've arrived in Perth. I work in hospitality. Oh, um, good. Definitely, I'm uh, in the business of hospitality. I work with a group called BWJ. I'm a supervisor over there. So we are part of the African community, the Cameroonian community in Perth. Excellent. Wonderful to meet you both. Thank you. What if we start with a bit of lovely Cameroonian music? Absolutely. Okay.
John Claude, tell us a little bit about that lovely song. Well, uh, this is a song from uh, Jean Bucoco, Jean Aladin Bucoco. He's, th- he's actually singing about uh, our independence and the fact that, you know, since we had a uh, so, lot of trouble during independence, he invited people through the song to get out of the bush and join the manifestation and celebrate our independence. But I would love to talk about the type of music itself, which is very important because uh, we usually call it the Asiko, which is a type of African, the Cameroonian music. Right. Asiko means, you know, dancing with your feet. Ha. So, uh, as, you, as you can see, it says Asiko, but in, in Basa language, normally it says Isiko. Right. Isi meaning the floor or the ground and the core is your feet right so the, the bottom line is there dancing with your feet on the floor right yeah um could you tell us a little bit about the cameroons please jean claude well cameroon has uh, that's a very good opportunity cameroon is uh, basically uh, an african country which is uh, very close or actually which is uh, in the northern part of the tropical Atlantic Ocean between Cape Lopez in the Gabon north and west to Cape Three Point in western region of Ghana at the interaction of the equator and the prime meridian. It's right yeah. in the little corner there, isn't it? It's that's correct. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's correct. As you go through, you see that corner there, turn there, there that's Cameroon part over and there. And in fact, we just looked at the map. It yeah. doesn't have a long coastline, That's does correct. It? Yeah, that's oh. correct. And you can see that we bordered with the Nigeria, the Chad, Republic of Chad. We have the Central, Republic of, uh, the Central African Republic. We've got the Republic of Congo and the, the Equatorial Guinea and the Gabon. Those are the countries that are bordering. So you've got Cameroon. lots of neighbors. That's correct. Yeah, <laughs> that's correct. And if and you look at the map, just to add to what you said, exactly. it has the shape of an elongated triangle. Yeah. yeah. It does, so it does. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So Cameroon is uh, one of the, f- it's actually the world 55th largest country of, of the world. Uh, divided into 10 regions it is slightly larger than the nation of sweden or right. actually close to or comparable to the size of papua new guinea right yeah our land is 472 or 710 kilometers square and uh, with 2730 kilometers square of water so far the north of the country is a semi desert far on the north of Canada in the yeah. Inland and there's a semi desert and uh, you see we have uh, that desert actually bordering into the vast Marwa plain uh, with a game reserve and a mineral deposit the so Cameroon is quite rich in that side of area there right yeah definitely and so also uh, the country is in the northern west particularly striking with the volcanic uh, peak where, whereby we have our Mount Cameroon. Uh, the Mount Cameroon is actually is the forest rise uh, to over 2,000 or 6,500 feet. Is it an active volcano? That's correct. Yeah, Just to add to that, active. it's very active and mm. it's equally a touristic mm. attraction. Mm because it has this race that goes on, marathon race that goes on every year in February. So it's taking place next week and it's attracted a lot of international tourists as well. Oh, the race is to run up? To run up the marathon, to run up the mountain and come down. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, What is the current population of the Cameroon? uh, Cameroon now we have 22 million. Same as Australia. Same as Australia, absolutely. Yeah, good. Almost the same as Australia, and uh, the other thing about Cameroon is its name, because most of the time we talk about Cameroon, most people does not understand. They don't. It's very good to to know why does the name Cameroon, where does the name Cameroon came from. So basically, we had uh, a Portuguese explorer, uh, this uh, this by the name of Ferdinand de Po who actually uh, was exploring the, that coastal uh, area and he therefore arrived in the in the that coastal area of Cameroon and saw a lot of shrimps 
in the prawns. in the river yeah. a lot of prawns and then he says uh, rio dos camaros which is in portuguese uh, therefore meaning uh, river of prawns Prawns. Prawns, yeah. Rio dos Camarões, which means river of prawns. Right. So, uh, therefore, Cameroon came from that. Camarões. Rio dos Camarões, meaning river of prawns. That's so, there's lots of prawns in the Cameroon. That's correct. So, that's how, <laughs> the, name of, that's how the name Cameroon came from. Uh, thank you, um, Jean-Claude. I never correct. knew that. <laughs> Excellent. That's great. Melvish, would you like to tell us something about that interesting song? Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, his name is uh, Prince Afua, one of the prominent singers from the northwest region of Cameroon. And he is into promoting the African and Cameroonian culture in particular. So that song was about lamenting the ills of the society. And the message is that one has to work hard before you achieve success. 
It is that so? Yes. Fascinating. Success, riches, and so on, they don't come on a platter of gold. You have to work for them. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. Yeah, the other thing on that is that it's, it's actually with in French and in English, mm -hmm. and that relates to the two culture that we have in, Af in Cameroon. Right. Which is yeah. really right. right. It's a bonding of French, yeah. English, Pidgin English, yeah. and the local languages. Yeah, absolutely. And religion as well, because there are aspects of Christianity, Islamism. Yeah. It's just a blend of everything, a reflection of what Cameroon truly is. Hey, you're a multicultural nation yeah. over there. Exactly. <laughs> Jean-Claude, let's perhaps talk a little bit about uh, Cameroonian history, please. Yeah. Thank you very much again, uh, Franco. It will be uh, with the time frame that we have, it will, be, it will be very hard and very difficult for us to talk about Cameroon as, you know, the diversity of Cameroon, including its diverse uh, culture. And, uh, but I will start by saying that our legacy, really, uh, our legacy uh, actually with the diversity date from back to 8000 BCE. Right. Uh, with the migration of the Baka people into the country. And uh, by 2000 BCE, an influx of Bantu speaking uh, tribes actually came into Cameroon, into the southern and uh, eastern region of the country, and pushed, yeah and pushed the Baka, who were the original uh, uh, inhabitants of Cameroon, and uh, so, and they settled in. And meanwhile, the Arabic and Hermetic migration group began to set in the dry area in the north. Uh, several civiliz civilizations grew in the north surrounding the Chad Basin, and uh, including strongholds of power, power belonging to Karem, Burno, and Sud the Sud people. But at the beginning of the 15th century, these northern ethnic groups were joined by the nomadic, by the nomadic, the Islamic, uh, Fulani tribe, who by two by the uh, seventeen hundred has established a powerful presence in the re in the region. Called the Fulani. The Fulani that right. brings back memories. Absolutely. Uh, so, but then that's how the Cameroon people actually the origin of the. Cameroon people started, and then we had influence, you know, from the French, so, sorry, by from the Germany that arrived, and uh, but by, by that time, then the land was escaped. The land has escaped colonial rules until 1884. Right. There was no colonial rules. So traditionally, <laughs> there was already a rich mixture of people in the Cameroon. That's correct. Before the Europeans before the arrived. European arrived. Yeah. At that time, just before the Europeans came, what was the situation again? What were the major groups? We had the Fulani in the north. In the north. We had the, ba the Bantu speaking in the south. We also had uh, also had those uh, how would you record them again? In the several that like, close to the large chart we had the Bur the Burnu and the so and the in the soil as well mix over there together. Yeah. Quite a rich yeah. mixture of Absolutely. people and languages. And that, that's correct. Jean Claude, could you tell us a little bit more about this richness of people in the Cameroon? Yeah, again as I was saying, uh, you know, uh, we had the Western Islanders called, also called grass grassfielders, uh, which include the Bamileke, the Bamun and many similar groups in the northwest Cameroon. Uh, the coastal tropical forest people, which include the Bassa, like myself, the Douala, and many other small groups in the southern uh, area. Uh, the southern tropical forest, which include the Betty, the Bulu, the Fang, and the Pygmy. And it has been said that the Pygmy was also the first to arrive in that area which are still, uh, they're almost like, uh, if I may take the analogy, like the aborigines in, uh, uh -huh, in, right. uh, in Australia. Yeah. I wonder where yeah. they would have arrived from. Any ideas where uh, they came from? It's, it's, a, it's a big, uh, it's a long story there. It's a very long story. Some are saying they arrived from the, back from the 
from the from the Congo. From some are saying that, but it's really not proven at the, at this stage. At this stage, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. We also have the Muslim in the north, semi uh, arid region, and central highlands, which include, as I was saying earlier, the Fulani, the Kirdi, and also non-Muslim people of the northern desert and central uh, highland country of Cameroon. So basically, that's how Cameroon is. You know, divided and separated in the regions. Are the people in the drier areas more nomadic people? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Like, uh, mostly in the north, northern side of Cameroon. Mm. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that song, that wonderful melodic song. Well, again, this uh, Ebua Lotting, one of the you know the first uh, Makosa musician in uh, Cameroon, uh, is, has passed away now. Uh, the music is about uh, how people should be together, how love has to prevail, is how. Unity has to be the first, foremost of everything. Uh, so that's his message of right. love and peace. Yeah, right. yeah interesting again the, the notion of bringing people together. Uh, now, this, as you're a linguist, a specialist, could you please tell us about the complexity of languages in Cameroons? Okay, thank you very much. Um, 
Cameroon is often described as Africa in miniature because uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's so true because uh, the four uh, language families that you would find in Africa three are found in Cameroon so we are talking about the Afro-Asiatic <coughs> which has about 55 languages we are talking about the Nilo-Saharan too the Niger-Congo which has about 173 languages. My Lord. So the only group that is absent is the Croatian group. Right. So we have a total of about 230 living languages because some are dead in terms of native speakers. They don't exist anymore. So some of those languages have disappeared. They have disappeared. Tell us a little bit more about the various languages now this. Okay, amongst these languages we have English and French, we are which are colonial heritages. So they were inherited from colonial rule which has become a blessing somehow. We equally have Pidgin English which comes from standard English and it used to exist a uh, it was mostly used by the uneducated, those who could not go to school or speak standard English, but it has come to be a lingua franca because we have people whose first language is actually Pidgin English. We equally have what we call the Franc Anglais, which is a blend or a mixture of French and English, and it's common within the youth. And interestingly, we have people coming from Europe to study these languages, you know especially those who have to do research in Africa and Cameroon in particular because it extends to parts of West Africa like Nigeria, Sierra Leone. So in order to be able to function with these communities, these researchers are forced in one way or the other to study these languages. These languages some sort of reflect the geography, the geography of the region. For example, in the north where we have the Sahel, we mostly have the Muslims and they speak for full day. As you move on to the south, we have Ewondo, we have Basa, and as you move on to the west, we have Bakweri, the northwest, we have Bafut, and a host of others. But then be reminded that no language in this country is dominant in terms of, it can only be dominant in terms of number of speakers, but none is superior above the other. We respect these languages and we are trying to preserve them as part of our heritage and culture. And there's been an attempt to transfer it to the younger generations. So they are being learned in schools, not all though, because developing writing materials is a challenge. So they are being learned in school at the elementary level and some are being documented. Because it's complex trying to keep all those languages alive. It's very alive. complex, and it, it's complex. It's a, a task, yes. And these languages are very rich in riddles, proverbs, that bring out the wisdom and the statistics of the language as well. For example, a common proverb is, a single hand cannot tie a bundle. <laughs> a single hand cannot hold a bundle, which means that divided with fall, united we stand. Nobody's an island. What a wonderful proverb. Yes. Huh? I think it's, is it, you know, do you think it's universal? In fact, uh, there's a little job for you, Melvis, the younger generation. Last year met a, 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 a youngish woman, a lovely lady from, she was in Singapore. Okay. She came along and she came from Melbourne to pay us a visit. And she wrote a collection, a book on proverbs, which okay. came from Southeast Asia. And I enjoyed looking at some of them to compare them to my own Italian uh, traditions. Okay. And it would be fascinating to extend it and look at the proverbs around the world. Okay. Hmm. There's a little job for you, Mary. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just coming back from what uh, Melvis was saying about the, lang about the languages. Uh, we are quite lucky in Cameroon to have all this diversity of languages. But one thing that unites us all is the fact that everyone tries to speak uh, official languages. We have the French and the English. If you can't understand what the other brother or sister is talking on his own language we use those languages so through those two languages 
we had bond so throughout the cameroons at school when a child goes to school begins what language do they use at school yeah. english and french so those are the two languages Equal status, yes. yeah. yeah so that's the actual official language yeah. but how do they work out uh, when to do it basically like uh, when uh, what mel was saying in order not to have one language dominating others we have agreed to collectively just speak languages or french english or french as official languages so when a child starts school will they know english or french they will learn they will learn those. they have to learn they will learn those from day one, one from day one that's yes. correct because at home they actually speak the language of the family which it depends on where the child finds themselves because if he or she is in the city where we have maybe english and english as dominating language they are forced to be embedded in that language so when they get to school the task becomes very easy but then if you take a village setting for example where the child has learned maybe the mother's first language and then when they get to school it becomes a challenge but then that's the reality and with time they, they tend to learn english and french so that means that virtually every cameroonian is is trilingual yeah definitely we try like if i take an example of myself i will easily like in the region where i was born i can easily speak you know two or three other uh, languages of those uh, regions so jean claude yeah. which languages do you speak i'm a, a bassa person in i was born in bassa but i can speak douala i can speak a little bit of a wondo so that make you know because of I've, I've learned to speak this through my friends visiting them living with them and back and forth that's, that's three I, local languages three local language. as well as english of english course of, and french as well wow yeah excellent mm-hmm. melvis what about yourself okay mm-hmm. i speak uh, english french german bafut oban and pidgin english oh about my six languages golly excellent yeah. well done and here in australia we often struggle trying to get someone else to learn another yeah. language yeah, yeah. Oh. E- excellent and let's enjoy another song from oh. the cameroons John Claude having spoken about the language of the Melvis was explaining to us wonderfully uh, obviously it shows that there've been European influences in the Cameroons could you tell us uh, the history please yeah of course as i was saying as we were saying earlier that uh, the first european who arrived in uh, the shore of cameroon was the portuguese uh, that, that actually those who actually given us the name cameroon but beside them from 1884 to 19 1884 to 1919 uh, at the all of the present day cameroon was co- 
consolidated and administrated by the German colony. So the Portuguese never settled the Cameroons? They could not, no. they, they did not settle. Right. Yeah, so they stay for some sometimes, but they were just yeah. explorers, so they were, you know, and they, they saw the, the, the shrimps and they given the name and uh, they were just... Never occupied They, they the never area. occupied. Right. But uh, the German came in. When did they come in? In 18... Yeah, the uh, German came in from 18... 84 right. to actually 1990. Because after all, mm. Germany did not become a nation until yeah. 1871, That's only it, yeah. 13 years earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Absolutely. So that's how they, because they, they came in and they started governing uh, Cameroon into building infrastructure. They, they tried to do a lot of things over there. But unfortunately, they lost the war. Well, uh, everyone knows that. And once they lost the war, the colony was given by uh, the nation League of Nations, which we call now uh, nation, uh, United, United Nations. Yeah, eighty percent of the Cameroon land to French, which uh, eighty percent on the south, and twenty percent uh, close to Nigeria to the British. So that's right. how we have these two uh, uh, languages in Cameroon with these two, two colonies, the French and the English. And therefore, up to today, we have, like, like Melvis and myself, <laughs> French speaking and uh, English ah, speaking. different influences. <laughs> That's correct, yeah. yeah. What impact did the French and the English have on the Cameroons? Uh, I would say, you know, positive and negative. Uh, I don't want to go into very like political or Fair things enough. like that. Yeah. But uh, negative because you know there's a lot of things that they could have done that wasn't done. Uh, but positive as well because you know they, they we've, we've developed at some point in terms of education. This they shows us how to read and how to to write in most cases. Jean-Claude, just to get a bit of an understanding, what is the activity, the economy of the Cameroons based on? Uh, yeah, well, uh, because of our favorable agricultural conditions, and we are one of the best and our primary commodity economy in the sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, basically, we have fishing, we have cocoa, we have cafe, we have cotton, uh, we have mineral resources which uh, uh, like manganese right. we've got even some little bit of oil rubber we've got rubber as you say so Cameroon is a little bit uh, it's quite rich uh, in terms of its mineral resources of course we've got people in Cameroon that are hard worker uh, so that's what but we've got timber which is also very very, very, uh, uh, one of our best uh, uh, commodity. So basically those are the commodities that make our uh, our economy is a little bit stronger. Thank you. There's yeah. quite a variety of There's economic a variety, activities. That's correct, yeah. And let's listen to a bit mm. more music perhaps. Yeah, okay. Oh, my God. 
that was okay. interesting music, quite happy. What is it about, John Claude? Well, that's uh, another type of music of Cameroon. Uh, this particular one is uh, from uh, Sally John. It's actually uh, the type of music that is Ambassy Bay. Yeah, which is like a sort of uh, rumba music. Oh. Yeah, so in general, the music uh, and dance of Cameroon is formed to varying, to varying degrees on African mu musical tradition passed on orally uh, from generation. So the earliest recorders, recorded music uh, from Cameroon come from the 1930s. Right. Yeah. So when the most popular style were imported from pop music and French uh, style uh, sort of chanson. So that's when they pick it from there. And therefore you've got uh, musicians like uh, uh, the earliest one that we, 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 we had from uh, Jean Bicoco and also some of the Makosa. That's how they, we developed the music over there. And uh, this particular one is a Makosa, uh, which means a dance. Yeah, it's uh, actually makosa. It means a dance, right? And uh, in the la in the Douala language, uh, it's very popular all over uh, Africa. So the, there's actually a music that started by uh, is a late Cam a late Cameroonian by the name of uh, Nele Yum. I actually had the opportunity of meeting him on his dying days in one of the clubs in uh, wow. uh, at the Mermoz Bar. <laughs> right. yeah. I met him there. It's a club with all, all other musicians. Live music. Live music. music. He was right. playing live music. So the cell began to take shape in the 50s. Uh, and the first one was recorded by Ebu Aloteng, the one that we just uh, uh, played just now. And then you saw the Manu Di Bangu and all of these guys who came in and uh, completed in. Uh, so, so far today, Makosa is very popular. It's good music. Africa. And so even uh, there's quite a rich variety of yeah. musical styles. Uh, definitely. Uh, uh, that's just one style. We have many mm. different styles like uh, the Bikutsi. We have, which is again another style where you have to wear these uh, belts. these belts and uh, around the waist. Along the waist, mm. so with different African uh, uh, traditional uh, instrument that give that wonderful vibrant uh, uh, notes to the music, which is really. What cool. are some of the traditional instruments used? Uh, well, we have like the the kunga, which is like you know we we take the the transom of the of the the tree. So we actually try to remove hollow it. The, the whole hollow, of it, yeah. mm -hmm. and therefore we play from there. And we've got things like the balafon. The balafon is like uh, we've got layers of uh, of uh, uh, how can I say it? We have a, a wood, wood like this. Right. And we've got layers of uh, planche. How do you call planche? Little slats. Slats, yeah. And then we've got your, uh, uh, your. Uh, oh, it's a percussion help. instrument. Exactly. So ah. that's one of the oldest instruments that we used to have in. Uh, and also we have like bottles, because we did bottles. not have drum drums. So you got your bottle. You put the bottle in here, and then you have maybe your forks or, or two knives, and we just it's go picky picky. So the sounds came very well on that one as well. Yeah. Yeah, so that's just in, and also the music also depend on which side of region, region yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. So here I'm just talking about one region. Uh, if you go to the west or the northwest, yeah. Find for example, different. yeah, in the northwest we we predominantly use drums yeah. and the trunks of trees and the xylophone, I guess. Something there, yes. Yes, where we hear it and then. It, it comes out in a wonderful blend. And it reminds me, we had a conference somewhere in the Southwest province. It was an international conference. And we invited some um, drummers who came and entertained during the conference. And there was a remark that one of our guests made. He said that it's like Cameroonian music. You can't dance 
on an empty stomach because <laughs> there is a lot of energy involved. Right. Yes, right. you have to shake it and yeah. shake it and shake it. Yeah. <laughs> and in some of them you have to be very fit as well. <laughs> yeah, like that's when we talking about being uh, dancing the bikutsi or the asiko, uh, you have to be very very fit and you have to you are fit, you have to be very very uh, yeah. very good, yeah. Ah, excellent. And the stomach cannot be empty. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Let's have a listen to another one, shall we? Lovely music from the Cameroons. Melvis, could you place so we get a bit of an understanding of the Cameroonian presence in Australia? Uh, okay, um, you know people migrate for various reasons and the last two decades have witnessed a massive influx of Africans and Cameroonians in particular into Australia, leaving the traditional um, destinations which used to be America and Europe. But then there is the presence of Cameroonians in Australia and in Perth in particular. People skilled and unskilled who come here for various reasons like family reunion, education, and so on. So about two years ago, a few Cameroonians who were in Perth decided to come together to form an association called CAMWA. Cameroonians of Western Australia and friends. How oh, good. Yes, yeah, so they decided to come together to because there is the sense of belonging is ingrained in in Cameroonians. We love to commune, we love to commune, uh, congregate and feast and talk and chat. So How oh, good. There was a need for them to come together. So this association has been running for close to two, three years. Okay. Whereby we congregate, we rotate in the house of members every month. And we meet, we talk, we eat. And we. it's a display of our culture because we, we dress, not compulsory though, we dress in our African Cameroonian style yeah. of dressing. And of we course here we can't see on the radio, but I can see a Melvis wearing a wonderful <laughs> traditional oh. head scarf and some lovely clothing, beautiful colours. Oh, thank you very much. So we come together to talk about Cameroon, tell stories about our country, because even though we are far from our country, we are still part of that country. Not saying that we haven't found home in Australia. Australia has provided home for us, but we are still part of our country, politically, economically, because we take we take part in almost everything that happens back there. We do vote, even though we are geographically divided. Right. We do take part. It's it's a political call. It's it's 
it's an it's part of being patriotic. It's a yes. Yeah, so, All right. Yeah. So we meet every month with our friends from different countries: Nigeria, Sierra Leone, and Australians as well. So we meet and we talk about our country, and we we share food, we share ideas, we see how we can help members. We disseminate information that is very useful to our members as well. And you meet in different homes. You rotate. Yes, there. in different homes. And last year we had uh, we celebrated one of our national days, the twentieth May. It's a day that is very important for the Cameroonians. This many people wonder why other African states celebrate Independence Day, but Cameroonians choose to celebrate. A reunification day, twentieth May. Right. Good. It's because, like Jean Paul said earlier, um, because Cameroon was handed over to Britain and France by the League of Nations, and imagine two different, um, the same country being ruled by different colonial powers with different languages, different styles of colonialism. For example, Britain came in with uh, indirect rule. And the French came in with imperialism, which is a form of direct rule. Right. So for two, for two different, um, for the same country to be ruled by different colonial powers and coming together as one, meant it's something to be highlighted. Right. So that is why our reunification is paramount to us, and not even the independence. That's fascinating. Which makes yes. good sense. Yes. It's like you get divorced. And then you reunite. It's <laughs> it's worth celebrating. It's worth celebrating. Yes. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I guess Kam Kamua just give us you know an opportunity to come together as uh, Mel was saying and socialize yeah. and talk about ourselves, talk about uh, our lives in Australia, and uh, I will also we also like to take the opportunity really to give the Australian people. Thanks for accepting us and uh, to giving us a you know, home here, and we are happy to be here. And we love every Australian to come and participate in our gathering. You know, whenever we have, we always have fantastic time. Uh, whenever we meet, Franco and should be our next. <laughs> <laughs> so we are, we are inviting you, Franco. Thank in you. Our next, uh, in our next meeting, which actually tomorrow. It's on Saturday. Yeah, that's it's tomorrow. Actually, tomorrow. Oh. Yeah. So uh, it's a short. Uh, I'm on it, but I certainly would love to come to one sometime. Absolutely. By the way, we are running out of time. Could you just tell us, perhaps, a little, little tiny bit about the foods of uh, Cameroon? What is the basic? Uh, yeah. Well, Cameroon cuisine is one of the most varied in Africa, uh, due to the location and the crossroad between the north, the west, and the centre. Uh, uh, basically, the food there that that's, that within the continent I'm talking about uh, added to this is the profound influence of French food uh, yes. that uh, have came to the legacy of the colonial area. Right. Uh, so Cameroon food is basically uh, based on the staple food, including cassava. Yeah, we have uh, cocoa yam. We have uh, some rice. Mostly in the north of Cameroon, <laughs> uh, we've got yam, we've got plantain, maize. we've got maize, we've got uh, potatoes, beans, we've got beans, we've got you know uh, achu, we've got ndole. Uh, so the main source of protein for Cameroon, for Cameroonian, is fish. You know, right. we've got uh, the coastal area. There's a lot of fish there, and if you go back north, there's a lot of meat. And so far, so that's really make us a uh, lot of varieties. But it's quite a rich variety, yeah, from what you're saying. Yeah, from uh, the look of things, it's just a reflection of the geographical area yeah. where each region is located. Yeah, because those in the north, they have meat because of <laughs> the Sahel, where the cows, the cows are rare. Right. And those along the coast, they tap from the sea. Yeah. They, they have fish from the sea. So it just reflects on where people find themselves. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Absolutely. Thank you. Melvis and Jean-Claude, unfortunately, we are coming to the end of the one hour quickly times. So I've been greatly honoured to have you here and I've learnt a lot about the cameras which I didn't know. So thank you very much for coming along. It's thank been you. a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate that.
And uh, let's enjoy one final song from the Cameroons. Jean Claude, a little tiny bit of introduction, please. Yeah, the Zangalo will be uh, playing now. The Zangalo will be playing now is one of the best uh, in uh, in uh, term of uh, you know activity of playing music is very funny those are uh, it's very enjoyable because they, they 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 just play they give the mood they spread the mood it's actually a group that actually plays because they was coming from uh, the military and therefore uh, they wanted to show how important was being part of the military and uh, therefore the place and they were having all of these uh, sort of uh, making fun of themselves like some of them being like uh, pregnant right. and uh, they were like <laughs> going along with like on, in the queue right. so dancing around people being pre- male being pregnant so those are the type of things that make very wonderful on that song there. Yeah, yeah so it's a victory song <laughs> love it yeah. Thank you once again.
Mati, 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 mati,